I've been covering left-wing protests for decades. I've covered anti-pipeline protests in Vancouver, anti-pipeline protests in Ontario. One of my favorite protests to cover was the Occupy Toronto protest in that city because it was so obviously artificial and fake. If you recall, Occupy Wall Street was a left-wing anti-capitalist movement, but they actually had one good argument. Why were the so-called capitalists of the big banks on Wall Street bailed out by taxpayers after the financial crash of 2008. Their solution was worse, by the way. They they wanted socialism, but they had a good question. The fact that one of Wall Street's richest oligarchs, George Soros, was bankrolling the anti-Wall Street thugs was a, was a delicious irony. But in Canada, it was just weird because, as you may recall, not a single Canadian bank failed in the 2008 financial crisis. In fact, it was the unionized automobile sector, Canadian subsidiaries of U.S. mega corporations. They're the ones who got the massive taxpayer funding. But for some reason, the left-wing protesters weren't directed at them. But you must admit it's weird to protest the bailout of failing banks in a country where no banks actually failed. It was fake, fake, fake. Here's some of what I saw at that phony event. Is that you, Dave? I'd like to continue the interview. I'm sure we can yeah, move yeah, somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. Hey, Dave, have you been charged with criminal proceedings? <laughs> Dave, are you going to plead guilty? Dave, how many G20 anarchists are here today? Dave, are you the proud face of the environmental movement? Well, that was back when my life was simpler. I was a journalist for the Sun News Network. I wasn't a boss. I was a working journalist. Uh, These days, I spend too much time in the office managing the 60 or 70 people who work for Rebel News, so I don't do as much in-the-field journalism as I used to do or as I'd like to do. My solace is that we have an amazing team that collectively does 10 times more than I ever could do as one person. I mean, just for example, here's the lovely Alexa Lavoie at a protest the other day. Je demande juste pourquoi vous venez ici. Oui, car les personnes me passent, c'est consentement. Hey, on va continuer. On va continuer parce que certaines personnes ne sont pas contentes. Et nous avons des gens qui essaient d'intervenir, mais je suis juste ici pour poser des questions et voir l'autre côté de l'histoire des gens. Mais il semble que les gens ne sont pas d'accord avec ça. Ils disent que je ne devrais pas être là et que je ne suis pas bienvenue et comment je devrais être capable de dormir la nuit, mais je suis juste ici pour poser simple question to them. I didn't like the fact that the protesters were so aggressive towards her, and I'm reminded of our duty to provide security to our journalists, a regrettable duty, as Trudeau has normalized hostility towards us by setting an example of having his own personal bodyguards beat us up. What are you doing? Get off me. Hey, I can... Hey, this is assault. I'm on a side... What is this? I'm on a sidewalk. What is this? You cannot touch me. No rushing or working. Hey! Are you kidding? Are you kidding? I call you. What is this? You can't. Am I under arrest? Am I under arrest? Am I under arrest? Because otherwise you have no right. I hate watching that. But my point is, I've been covered, covering oil and gas and pipeline and mining and anti-capitalist protests for almost two decades. That's how old I am. And one of the most eye-opening things for me was that I saw the same professional protesters at each one. I got to know them by name, even. I'd see the same guy at an anti-mining protest and then at the Occupy Toronto protest. And then the same people were out in Hamilton in an anti-pipeline protest. And then the same people were at an idle no more protest. Same people. 
Same leaders. Now, the leaders knew a little bit about what they were doing, but the rent -a mob did not. Some of them were literally street people who were paid 50 bucks to hold a sign for the day, 50 bucks and a hot lunch. They didn't have a drop of politics in them at all. Some of them were mentally ill people being used as cannon fodder. It's very sad. I remember one young woman, Trish Mills was her name. I still remember her. She, she had a blog about her deep mental illness. It made me extremely sad to read about it and then to see how the environmentalists took advantage of her, egged her on to commit the crimes. She was the one who got charged and convicted and punished while the bosses didn't get themselves in trouble. They literally used marginalized and damaged and mentally ill people as their weapons to commit political crimes for fundraising. It made me sad and mad, not just at the environmentalists, but at the media party who obviously saw the same things I saw. That all these many events were organized by the same professional organizers. None of them were organic. Most of the participants were clueless about their mission. They were just doing what they were instructed to do. How different from, oh, say, the truckers. The trucker convoy was authentic, organic, real people. And if you actually stopped to ask any one of them why they were doing what they were doing, oh, they would tell you at great length. No one put them up to it. They had some leaders, but I'd call them more symbolic or spiritual leaders, like Tamara Leach. Yes, there were millions of dollars raised to pay for the truckers, but you'll recall very little, if any, of it actually flowed. They were seized by GoFundMe, then seized by the government. And when that wasn't enough, they actually seized the bank accounts of hundreds of peaceful protesters without court process. So it was the opposite of a bought and paid for campaign. It was penalized and punished. What you just saw was an excerpt from my nightly show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every weekday, I do a monologue. Usually, it's about half an hour. Then I interview an interesting guest, and then we read my hate mail or my fan mail, whichever is more fun. It's only available behind a paywall, though. That's how we pay our bills here at Rebel News. We don't take a dime from Justin Trudeau. But the good news is it's only 8 bucks a month, about half the price of Netflix, and in addition to my weekly, sorry, my nightly show, you also get weekly shows from four other friends here at Rebel News. So you're getting 36 shows a month just for eight bucks. I think it's worth it. And even if you're not quite sure, do it anyways, because we rely on viewers like you to keep us free and independent. I promise you I'll never take a dime from Trudeau. Just go to rebelnewsplus.com and click subscribe. Thanks.